What if I told you that making a realistic looking Spider-Man mask isn't as hard and overwhelming as it may seem? This Spider-Man mask was entirely 3D printed, and by the end of this video, you'll know exactly how it was made. From printing, assembly, painting, vacuum forming, and the lens dyeing process. But that's not all, because I'll also be sharing tips as well as what mistakes to avoid each step of the way in case you wanted to make one for yourself or apply these techniques to other projects. This superior Spider-Man mask is a paid file provided by DO3D and is a direct recreation of the superior suit seen in Marvel Spider-Man 2. A link to this file as well as all the materials used to make this mask will be in the description below. When making textured Spider-Man masks, I like to print the outer shell at a 0.16mm layer height on my FDM printers. As for the lens frames, I prefer to resin print those because there's hardly any post-processing that needs to be done, which is a huge time saver. If you've been 3D printing or have known about 3D printing for some time, it's no secret that magnets have become a staple in assembling 3D prints, specifically helmets. But this process can be messy and time consuming if you don't have a smooth technique and workflow. So allow me to share with you a few tips that greatly decrease the amount of time I spend doing this. Firstly, the type of adhesive I use to secure the magnets into place is a super glue with an instant spray activator. So there's no waiting around for glue to dry. If you don't already own this type of super glue, please go out and get yourself some. I genuinely can't imagine this hobby without it now. The mask was designed to fit 8x2 millimeter magnets. For me, I found that the easiest, mess-free way of installing magnets was to use this interchangeable bit screwdriver. With the bit removed, an 8x2 magnet fits perfectly around the diameter of the screwdriver, which allows me to force magnets into their slots without getting super glue on my fingers. And when it comes to super glue, less is more. And always double check your polarity before gluing in a magnet. There's hardly any sanding that needs to be done on a print like this. I did, however, have some top layering on the top of the mask, so I used a few coats of Duplicolor Filler Primer to fill those imperfections before moving on to paint. It's insane how many different types of red spray paint there are, so naturally, I had a really hard time finding the right color to use for this build. I started with a Rust-Oleum Satin Apple Red, which came out way too light and looked washed out. I then went with a darker satin colonial red, which ended up having a flat brick-like color, which I wasn't a fan of either. I felt like I was being catfished by these paints, as the results were not reflecting what was advertised. I eventually settled on a Krylon satin red pepper, which was the same color I used on the Royal Guard helmet I made a few months ago. The color I used was close enough, but I probably could have found a better color if I kept experimenting. For the lens frames, I used a Rust-Oleum Satin Black. I wanted them to have a reflective sheen, but nothing too aggressive, as the lenses themselves are very dark and glossy, so I wanted the lens frames to complement them and not compete or distract from them. The last thing that needs to be painted are the web lines on the mask. And I know what you may be thinking, how do you go about painting those without making any mistakes? Well. I'm going to list a few ways, and I want you to think for a second about what the best way to go about painting them would be. Option 1. Use an acrylic paint marker slash sharpie. Option 2. Paint them by hand using a brush. And option 3. Paint the helmet black first, then apply masking tape over the web lines, then finally painting over them red. I chose option 2. I hand painted them with a brush using the same paint that I used on the lens frames, but I'll explain why I decided to not go with any of the other options. Starting with option 1, I didn't feel as though I'd have as much precision using a marker. I felt way more comfortable using a brush instead. Also, I wanted the web lines to have a similar sheen and reflect light the same way that the lens frames do. So to me, using a marker would have just seemed more amateur compared to the other paints used. As for option 3, using masking tape, the web lines are exactly a sixteenth of an inch wide. They do sell masking tape of that size, however, there are a lot of lines on this mask, and they don't have a symmetrical pattern, they're random and chaotic. Masking off the web lines would have been challenging, and touch-up work would have no doubt been needed after the fact. Maybe on a regular Spider-Man mask, using this method would work well. But for this particular mask, it seemed like a way safer way to go just hand painting them. Although I am considering making another one of these and trying it with the masking tape method instead in the future. It's now time to talk about the thing that you may be most curious about, the lenses. 
I'll admit, I was very reluctant to attempt making this mask at first, because I had no idea how to tackle the lenses. I only recently learned how to vacuum form, so I'm going to explain to you the process in the easiest way possible. In case you're unfamiliar with the process of vacuum forming, it's the process of heating a thin sheet of plastic until it starts to deform, then pressing it down onto an object you want to make a form of, then using a vacuum to quickly remove the air from underneath, which results in a plastic replica of the original mold. First things first, I'm using a 5 inch by 5 inch vacuum forming machine that I found on Amazon for just over $100. And I'm using sheets of PETG, which are 0.03 inches thick. Once again, links for all the materials I'm using will be in the description. In order to vacuum form the lenses, I needed to make a buck slash mold of them. Learning from the mistakes I made in my previous video, I was making lens bucks for a Darth Vader helmet, which I printed in PLA and sanded them smooth. Unfortunately, due to the heat involved in the vacuum forming process, the molds were getting deformed and the filler products I used to smooth the surface were also being affected. So this time around, I printed solid versions of the lenses entirely in resin. That way they're easy to smooth and almost entirely resistant to the heat involved during vacuum forming. I then generated a cylinder-like shape and modified it to act as a shelf for the lenses to rest on. After those were printed, the lenses were ready to be formed. From there, it was just a matter of carefully cutting out the lenses with a pair of scissors. If you want more information on this machine and the vacuum forming process in general, then I would highly recommend checking out my Darth Vader helmet tutorial. I spent a lot of time talking about how I made the lenses, as well as what mistakes to avoid when using this particular machine. Now if this were any other Spider-Man mask, we'd be done. But the Superior Spider-Man mask has these beautiful dark tinted lenses. So in order to pull that off, we need to dye them. The product I'm using is iDye Poly, which is a special version of the product meant to be used on synthetic materials and plastics. Very important, do not place PETG into the dye when the temperature is near boiling. The plastic will start to warp and deform. You need to wait until the water cools down to around 150 degrees Fahrenheit, and I wouldn't let it drop any lower than 135 degrees. The most important thing to keep in mind when doing this is to not drop the lenses entirely in the dye. I made this mistake several times and it took me several attempts to realize that's what I was doing wrong. Because the lenses are so small, they'll immediately sink to the bottom and will be covered in chunks of dye, turning them completely opaque. The best method of dyeing them is to wear gloves and manually soak them in the dye for about 10 to 15 seconds then immediately soaking them in a separate pot of cold water to shock them. Repeating this process until the darkness is to your liking. The way you tell if they're dark enough is to hold them against a dark surface. I would highly recommend vacuum forming multiple lenses before dyeing them. That way if you make a mistake or don't like how they come out, you'll have others to choose from. Once I'm finished with the dyeing process, I let the lenses air dry before cleaning them with plastics cleaner. The lenses are designed to insert into the frames from the front, which makes it a little difficult to install them. My first attempts at installing the lenses didn't work out as intended. My idea was to use a 3M spray adhesive. After masking off the lens frames, I sprayed the area that the lenses would be resting on. Unfortunately, there is not enough contact between the lenses and the adhesive sprayed area to properly adhere. So after all that time taping and prepping, the lenses immediately fell out. I was really worried that if I used glue, it would be visible when looking at the lenses, but I didn't really see any other options at this point. Against my concerns, I ended up using super glue, but in very small amounts. Using a toothpick, I applied very small amounts onto the outermost edges of the lens frames, then using an instant spray activator once the lenses were in place. To my surprise, no glue residue was visible when looking at the lenses, which was definitely a relief. Now, it's just a matter of installing them onto the mask. You have a choice of using magnets or glue. I chose to use hot glue in order to save magnets and time, but the choice is yours. I'm really happy with how this mask turned out, and it will make a fine addition to my collection. The Superior Spider-Man suit was one of my favorite suits in Marvel Spider-Man 2, 
so having a mask of my own is a special kind of feeling. Seriously, that feeling of bringing your favorite props from games and movies to life is a level of satisfaction that never gets old. It's the best part of 3D printing, and it's the reason why I'll always be doing this. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you want to see more videos like this, check out the description below. There is a link to a playlist where you can see my previous build videos so far. I'm working on some really cool projects that I'm very excited about and can't wait to show you all. So if you want to see those, please consider subscribing. Until then, take care, and I'll see you guys on the next project very soon.